surprise us, lacking in any kind of definite answers to the big questions that we all have. It's been shocking for all of us, and I hope the pandemic will be brought under control soon. But it's also made me think uh, about the importance for all of us that we need to be prepared for volatility and uncertainty in the future. Because it, it, we have to realize that even when this virus is under control, we will continue. Research on the future of work indicates that professional success in the coming decades will require individuals to be ready for the unknown. You'll be expected to shift to new areas of research and practice quickly, to master intercultural teamwork and to adapt to things like suddenly completely moving to online work with very little notice, as an example. As another example, a recent study by McKinsey indicates that fully 60% of existing jobs could be automated today with existing technology. So take a minute to think about that. Te the technology to replace most of the world's workforce already exists. And the only thing keeping most companies from replacing their workers with robots is that it's either too time consuming or too costly to do it for now. Given that we're experiencing such a major shift in how we work and that companies today are forced to consider new ways of doing business, we can expect that the jobs people have will continue to change in the, in the years to come. Research science is no different than the corporate world. Labs are adapting to new techniques and areas of inquiry as quickly as they're discovered. The level of competition among labs now means that they must constantly be evolving if they want to compete. Analytic techniques that once took teams of researchers can be done now with the push of a button. None of this has to be terrible. This doesn't have to be a horror story. I remember hearing similar warnings when I was in university 25 years ago, and I'm still here. In fact, what has happened over the past decades is that as some sectors of the economy are automated or outsourced, new sectors emerge to fill holes, to serve the new technologies, uh, or, or to discover new technologies. Individuals and companies who have been able to keep up with those changes have thrived. They've done extremely well. While those companies and those individuals who have insisted on doing things the old ways have suffered badly and been left behind. So our curriculum that we will offer you in our graduate programs and in every course is designed with these realities in mind. We build all of our degrees around a core of active, hands-on research under the guidance of our excellent professors. Our programs also include classes in the core areas of disciplinary knowledge, seminars in emerging fields, and we also build in some exposure to subjects that you might not expect. Uh, we do that so that you will have an awareness of the broader fields around you, which will be a resource when the unexpected arises and you need to change how you're doing business. The people leading you through all of this will be your faculty members. I'm sure you've heard that Nazarbayev University professors are leaders in their field, and they are. Our professors publish in the top journals of their fields, which means that they are not just familiar with, but they are the ones producing the latest science in the world. So working with them means that you will be learning about the latest developments in science, sometimes even before those, those developments are published to the rest of the scientific community. Hiring professors from the best labs and the best universities in the world also means that as a student, you will gain access to the global networks that connect the best scientists. Our professors maintain active collaborations with scholars in places like Stanford, Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, National University of Singapore, Tsukuba University in Japan, Oxford in the UK, Humboldt University in Germany, and many, many more. Through our professors, you will be in touch with the researchers in those places as well. One thing I'm very sorry about today is that we cannot welcome you into our Nazarbayev University facilities to see our campus. But rest assured, it will be here waiting for you when we're ready to open up. We have some pretty impressive facilities, including laboratories with state-of-the-art equipment. We have an excellent library connected to other libraries around the world. And we have facilities for sport, socializing, living, um, medicine, everything that you need, as nice as any university that I've ever visited. In fact, I'm, I'm often a little bit jealous uh, the student experience at, at NU. I wish my university had been so comfortable. Most importantly though, you'll be part of a community of scholars that includes other students like yourself. All of our students are brilliant, motivated, and not afraid of challenge. As important as your professors are for your academic experience, it is these other students who have the biggest impact on your experience in graduate studies. At NU, we're fortunate to attract creative students from all over the globe which means that everywhere you look when you're here, you'll see people who share your passion and your curiosity. 
And of course, all of this work is supported by the professional student support teams who are here to help you with anything you may need. Uh, these teams are working behind the scenes today uh, to make sure that everything here goes very smoothly. So I offer them a great thanks to them. Uh, and to you, once again, I say thank you for coming to visit us, uh, and I hope you have a great experience. Goodbye. Thank you uh, to Dr. Pio for his welcome speech. And uh, Professor Alexander, uh, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Alexander Tikhonov. I'm uh, Associate Professor of Physics at uh, Nazarbayev University. And I'm, pre I'm going to present today the PhD program in physics. So some of you uh, know very well what is Nazarbayev University. Some of them, some of you are pretty new. And uh, let me say a couple of words about the Nazarbayev University in general. Nazarbayev University for Kazakhstan is a unique place in the sense that here we are successfully, I believe successfully established the uh, technocratic mentality and environment suitable for contemporary science and technology. The contemporary science and technology are developed in the best place in the world and we are striving to do something similar here to establish this environment. This environment involves the people, mostly people, connection between the people and infrastructure, suitable infrastructure for that. And since Nazarbayev University was able to bring in several hundreds, the professors from all over the world with the working knowledge and experience working in the best institutions in the world. So this is the uh, actually is happening and we do have this environment. I would say uh, I personally I spent, uh, um, although I uh, got my master degree at Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology, which is the best Soviet Union Institute for Physics, uh, but uh, also mm -hmm. I was getting my PhD at the University of Pittsburgh and uh, I was there research assistant professor. I was teaching uh, at, at states, I was, I'm teaching here. Here I uh, was uh, able to establish a relatively large experimental facility and laboratory. And uh, I have uh, two PhD successful graduated students. Two, uh, so they already two PhD students uh, from physics successfully graduated. Uh, and we have several more current current students. And I think our pro uh, program is uh, good and successful. And I'm going to uh, convince you on this. Um, physics, why physics? It used to be that physics was the kind of the uh, only alternative if you want to do the, um, the uh, science and research uh, uh, in the um, related to the uh, so-called physics topics. Right now, uh, the, um, the, uh, there are many other opportunities and many other departments and fields that you can do similar projects as you do in physics in other departments. For example, you can go to the uh, robotics, you can go to the chemical engineering department, you can go to chemistry, you can go to the uh, electrical engineering departments. And what you will be doing there, you'll be doing projects which is pretty similar to physics. So the distinction, distinct, uh, the um, boundaries between the departments are less strict nowadays than before. Right now, the science in general have the more uh, interdisciplinary uh, uh, smell. And therefore, uh, the, uh, when you are choosing the, what kind of PhD program you are, want to do, my suggestion is uh, look on the existing projects and professors at each perspective for you uh, departments and see what these guys are doing, what kind of projects these guys are doing. And if you're interested in these projects, 
uh, then probably this is department is for you. When you will do, be doing this, you will also notice that the uh, many projects are truly interdisciplinary. For example, uh, um, at uh, our department, we run projects. I personally run projects together with biology and chemistry people and uh, with electrical engineers. They are uh, we developing the uh, diagnostic for the COVID uh, virus with biology guys, but these biology guys they need uh, to have uh, to make a device and using the advanced lithography techniques, which is the expertise uh, which we have. So they we work together. So this interdisciplinary uh, the uh, feature is actually is enrooted into the physics department. Because see, physics, physics sounds like very basic, very, it's, it's, physics is uh, on the fundamental level uh, underneath everything. So uh, physics is, uh, if you want to go engineering, you need any, any engineering field, then you need to go first to physics. When you talk to uh, the chemistry level, you, uh, on, uh, uh, you, you, you talk about the chemistry project, biology project, it's still the lot of things that happening there are based on the physics phenomena. So kind of physics is the uh, very fundamental field. And that makes us to be very actually the versatile. So we can do everything. And, we, and uh, let, let me, uh, uh, I'm going to show it by introducing our uh, laboratories and professors. Okay, ah, let me explain also how we work. Uh, uh, I, background behind me is the laboratory at Molecular Foundry at Berkeley Lab, University of California, Berkeley. So for many years, we work with them. Uh, they are strategic partner of Nazarbayev University. And this is this partnership is actually very practical. So uh, in particular, uh, uh, my group and many other people, we are working there uh, physically. So we have running projects there. We are affiliated with the Berkeley Lab. And this means that we have uh, active projects there. And typically every summer and sometimes uh, during other times, the team of the Nazarbayev University uh, students, professors go there and spend two or three months working in the lab. That's what is on, on my slide behold. That is university, Nazarbayev University researchers, students, we all in the clean room facility of molecular foundry at Berkeley lab, working to develop new generation of the transistor for the future electronics. Now let me switch to the presentation. And I'll, I'll give now the more general uh, things about the uh, Department of Physics uh, PhD program. Can I share? I think I should share my screen. Yeah, I can share my screen. Uh, first, few words in general about the physics department. Uh, we are now full-pledged department. So we are well-developed. So the uh, Nazarbayev University is, exists now for 10 years. So we started uh, uh, from the just creating the bachelor uh, degree in physics. Uh, then uh, now Nazarbayev University is doing all types of the uh, standard uh, university education. We do masters, we do PhD. We have postdocs working in the lab. We have national lab facilities. We do research. We uh, have the uh, also so-called innovation cluster, innovation cluster where the startups are developed. So we, there are the special, the, uh, the commercialization, a business incubator, and uh, similar facilities and departments to help to transfer the scientific uh, technological development into the commercial and practical uh, realm. So this is now all at Nazarbayev University and we are part of it. So in physics, we have Bachelor of uh, Science in Physics, we have Master of Science, we have PhD in Physics. So all in place, so all is connected. Uh, we have 15 uh, faculty members, 
at the physics department. All of them has experience in the um, best places in the world. We have many official postdocs. So these six postdocs are the official postdocs that so-called provost postdocs. But we have many other uh, postdocs that are working in, uh, uh, on specific research projects. So I would say that in general, we have uh, postdocs about maybe 15 and five of them uh, with my group. We have uh, currently, uh, this is all data, three PhD candidates. We have more than three PhD candidates. I think we have now uh, six PhD candidates working, two graduates. Uh, we, uh, in general, uh, the, we have the, in, uh, the teaching we provide on all levels, bachelor, uh, master's, and PhD. If you enter in our PhD program, we'll ask you to spend considerable amount of your first year to take courses. Uh, why are we doing this? If you may, uh, if you're familiar with the uh, uh, the uh, United States and Europe uh, PhD program, uh, the PhD uh, typically the old teaching courses happening on the master's level. Uh, on PhD levels, there are less courses, but we're doing it uh, mostly because um, the uh, we want to uh, encompass the uh, the PhD candidates from all over Kazakhstan with different experience. So the candidates uh, will come with different backgrounds. So you, uh, and we want that um, to kind of provide you during the first year of PhD to provide you some uh, the uh, additional basic uh, advanced courses that will prepare you for the competitive uh, uh, research, which is suitable for Nazarbayev University. So that's why we want to uh, give you the first year of uh, teaching. Uh, then uh, also uh, we have opportunities for internships. As I said, for a uh, couple of examples, uh, uh, we organize internships. I personally organize internships in Berkeley and in Stanford. Uh, the Stanford, uh, this current summer, there was opportunity for three internships uh, at the uh, SLAC, uh, Stanford, Stanford Linear Accelerator facility, and then we had several opportunities in Berkeley this summer. Unfortunately, we could not go anywhere this summer because of the COVID situation, but we are postponing, so our projects are still running there. So next summer we'll go again for the internships. Then there are many other opportunities for internship. Basically, uh, the uh, how it works with internships. The uh, our professors have a good network all over the world, and. Uh, we have collaborators. If uh, the professor has collaborator somewhere in the world, say Ohio State University in the States, then the, here the, there is probably opportunity for internships because the, then there is the exchange of the people between the collaborators. So this is typical science, uh, how science organized. Collaborators, they organize exchange between the uh, students, researchers between them. And this is, uh, can be done in form of internship. Um, research. Uh, we involve in the research all students, including undergraduate. So uh, um, every student, uh, so currently some our, uh, well, master students and PhD students, you are entering PhD, you are looking for the PhD program, PhD student, PhD program is centered and based on research. So you should be, uh, expectation is that we want you, we are interested in that, the same as you, that you do the world-class research. You publish at least two, three world-class papers. And you'll do this, uh, and you are uh, as good as any other PhD in the world, as in the best places in the States of Europe. So that's our uh, approach. So we really are doing this. So the, our recent graduates show the uh, contemporary level. And we are happy on those. So we believe that we already have this structure and opportunities for this successfully PhD research. Uh, courses, this is examples of the undergraduate courses. Uh, you can see it, uh, you're entering PhD, but uh, you may look at these courses to see what kind of our expectations, because 
uh, if you go to PhD program at physics, then you really need to have the strong background. And this is a typical process. You, I, I believe all of you, if you are in, in this, are familiar with these courses. If specific, you feel yourself that you are weak on some specific area that is uh, illustrated in these courses, that's fine because our first year PhD is actually, uh, will try to help you to kind of uh, um, fill the, the gaps in your basic education. If, if you have it, if you have it, or if, if you feel you're missing something. So, but generally we want you to be uh, universal. So PhD in physics, physics is a universal thing. So uh, we expect that if you do research with us, do the PhD program, then after that, you can go anywhere. So you can go and continue work in uh, any branch of uh, the STEM, contemporary uh, science and technology field. You want to go to doing technology, doing engineering in solar cells, here you go, go. You want to design the computers, you want to work on the microelectronics, go. You want to be in space, you want to design the uh, uh, satellites, you want to uh, design the scientific uh, experiments, to be performed in space, or you want to study the galaxies and black holes, all right? So that's opportunity we'll, we'll, uh, we'll have after you have the, uh, the uh, PhD in physics. Ah, there's some pictures of uh, our students working in different places and during the internships. Uh, research. Now, that's important point. So if you come to us, what uh, you'll be doing with us? Again, PhD program is the mostly based on research. And what kind of research you'll be doing here is connected to specific professor. Because what you are doing here, will you'll be uh, into the environment of the prof individual professor group. Every professor of our department he is working, so he has his own group. And there are students, researchers working there, and you'll be part of this group, and you'll be participating in these projects. What if you have your own idea and you want to do the specific, you work on specific field? Is it possible that you uh, will find the opportunity to do it with us when you are a PhD student? The answer is probably yes. We had this uh, specific case. So uh, my first PhD student, he came with the dream idea. He came uh, um, six years ago to me saying that I want to build the carbon nanotube transistor, which has negative capacity properties. And uh, at this moment, we didn't have even enough uh, infrastructure to do that. But he had a dream. Uh, we thought about it, or oh, it can be organized. Is it connected to our research? And we found the uh, opportunity to do that. And he actually did this research and successfully graduated. So it is possible. But if you want to do something like this, talk to the professor, see if uh, inside the topics of his lab, you can find the opportunity to do what you want. Generally, uh, well, uh, I, uh, you should just have the general um, idea of what field you want to do. And then try to uh, find the details, talk to the professor uh, on the, doing this field, uh, try to see what are the specific projects they are doing. Uh, can you um, switch between the groups? Say you um, uh, came, uh, you started to do the uh, laser-based radiation material sciences. Uh, you started to work on this, and then half a year uh, later, uh, when you look in the labs, you look at the other labs, and you look at inside yourself, and you thought, oh, I, I'm not a, a laser person. I'm an astronomy and cosmology person. Can you switch? And says yes, you can switch. It's better you do it during the first year of PhD, but if you come to us, there is still opportunity you can do it on the fly. Or you can choose the specific field, specific professor with whom you work. Uh, oh, that's interesting. So uh, one of our professors is the George Smoot. Nobel laureate professor George Smoot from Berkeley. Uh, the story is many years ago, um, uh, we came to Berkeley lab uh, and we talked to George Smoot. Uh, uh, and uh, idea was uh, we came to him and uh, we say, oh, uh, here we are building the uh, elite world-class university at Kazakhstan. Uh, well, and maybe we can build some um, infrastructure and the lab that 
will give you opportunities that you don't have in Berkeley. How about that? If, if, can you consider that you built also the uh, the mirror or kind of the uh, your own lab with us in Kazakhstan? So it will be part of your activity. And he said yes. And we, it, that was happening over the last uh, actually six years. And currently we have the successful. It's called Energetic Cosmic Laboratory at Nazarbayev University. And head of this, George Smoot, Nobel Prize uh, laureate. Oh, by the way, you can see, if you see the Bean Bank theory, uh, serial, uh, you will see that Sheldon, uh, he sometimes talked to the, uh, he sometimes talked to the uh, uh, scientist, uh, real scientist, and there was two series when he talked to George Smoot about something funny. Uh, <clears throat> so with this laboratory, they were successfully recently, they've been working for several years, they built uh, unique telescope. It's installed in uh, Almaty region and supposed to uh, observe the um, uh, gamma uh, gamma uh, uh, radiation uh, pulses coming out of the from the space. These gamma radiation pulses they come uh, and last um, for just a couple of minutes. And when they come, uh, uh, typically typical telescopes are not able to observe these uh, gamma bursts because uh, you need to tune to first point your telescope into the uh, into this uh, gamma burst uh, um, occurrence and it takes time so the uh, what we built here is a unique one the unique in the world maybe in year and two we'll have the first nature paper out of this um, um, but this telescope that is in Kazakhstan able in just uh, 10, 15 seconds to move very fast to the point of interest. And then uh, we are now just waiting for the uh, gamma bursts happening because they're happening typically once per several months. We're waiting for this uh, gamma burst, then it will fast, we'll go into watch it and we'll get the unique data out of it. So one, one of the project on this. Another project uh, uh, they're doing, they're developing the very sensitive sensor. Uh, to measure individual photons. And um, particularly, um, I participate in this project as well because, well, it, as I said, the, every project is multidisciplinary. So these projects involves uh, the, uh, the, you need to, uh, to nanofabricate the sensor. The sensor is actually devised from the complex uh, 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 design of the advanced materials. So and we are able we believe we're able to nanofabricate this, and we are trying working on this project as well. So, and then there are there are several professors at Nazarbayev University Department of Physics who are uh, doing cosmology and astrophysics. You will see it from the list when I, I'll, I'll later do it. You will see that these guys uh, and all these guys are working together. So, because science is collaborative, so these guys work together, and they work with George Smoot and the ECL. It's both theoretical, both experimental cosmological astrophysics field. All right. Oh, uh, guys, I, I, uh, I cannot uh, resist temptation to uh, praise our Department of Physics. <laughs> department of, our Department of Physics, actually, we are probably best, maybe not, or at least one of the best in terms of the research output at Nazarbayev University. Our department has probably one of the highest average HIH uh, index, research index of the professors. Uh, our graduates, most of our graduates successfully enter the best universities in the world. So we believe that we are doing something right because our graduates get to the good places. This is uh, examples. So. MIT, Berkeley, uh, John Hopkins, University of Michigan. So uh, all these places, our graduates go successfully to all these places. Let me now talk quickly. I'll show you the individual professors and their individual fields, what they're doing. So I'll do it fast because we have 15 professors. You want more information? Go on the website. You want more information to, to that? Talk to this professor. So feel free if you're prospective graduate student for physics, or you're considering yourself, talk to the professor uh, about what he's doing and what you can do there. So find out this. So this, you should be one-to-one -one connection to this. But here, uh, what I'm doing, I just, I'll do the quick overview of this. Anton Desatnikov is head of the department. 
uh, pretty uh, is well established scientist. He has huge age index, uh, huge uh, publication record, and uh, he is doing the nonlinear and singular photonics, photonic lattices, soliton, structured light, optical vertices. Uh, and that's interesting stuff with photonics. So you can control the light using the advanced uh, advanced the photonic structures. So this is a very interesting field. It has both fundamentally practically. And Anton is doing theory. He is a theoretical guy. He uh, and this is um, I, I, I would uh, I would say one of the successful uh, operation at our uh, department. Jean uh, Jean Jacques uh, Zondi. Uh, the, he's doing laser physics, very established scientist. Uh, they, he using the advanced uh, lasers to do the uh, laser spectroscopy, nonlinear optics, nonlinear materials. Uh, he, he's currently establishing his own lab uh, at Nazarbayev University that is advanced uh, laser labs. And uh, he has good experience. Uh, Costas. Janopoulos, uh, um, sorry, uh, where is my screen? All right, Costas. Costas, he is doing the uh, electromagnetics, and he works with very interesting materials. Uh, it's uh, the metamaterials. And the, uh, this is a pretty uh, relatively new uh, field in photonics. Uh, if you ever wonder if it's possible to do uh, the invisible clock, so the, uh, you, imagine you have the uh, dress which makes you optically invisible. So it was in the science fiction before, but is it possible realistically in contemporary science? The answer is kind of yes. It looks like it is possible. We need to develop it further, but it looks it's possible. So that's uh, the, you need to have really advanced photonic structure for that. That's one of the topics of Costas. And uh, he is very also proficient and successful, uh, the publisher. He is publishing lots of interesting papers. Lots, uh, and um, he is theoretician. Uh, the uh, overall background of his is electrodynamics, but he applied this to the uh, uh, these uh, 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 fine things, how what you can do with electromagnetic materials to control light in special ways to achieve something like the uh, cloaking or very you know, fine, uh, advanced uh, things with the light. Jean Dosutigulov, experimentalist. He is doing laser-based material science and technology. Uh, specifically, he has, uh, uh, as every one of us, he has his specialty. He is uh, especially good on the doing photothermal and laser spectroscopy sensing techniques. And he developed his own lab now in place. Uh, he was building for many years. He has the advanced experimentation. And uh, many outside uh, uh, scientists from all over the world they come to him to ask him to do the specific measurements because the uh, the setup that he currently has is really advanced and really good. He's doing also femtosecond laser-based uh, uh, science. So the femtosecond, very short pulse of time. So is it interesting science and technology possible out of laser working with the femtosecond laser-based uh, uh, stuff? Yes, yes. So he's John um, is doing that. Oh, that's myself. Uh, uh, well, what uh, I built recently, the accelerator. So we have accelerator at Nazarbayev University. It took us six years to build. We built it in connection with the Berkeley, Berkeley lab. So Berkeley and Tomsk the Polytechnic University. So there was uh, three uh, partners, Berkeley, Tomsk, and us. We built together the uh, accelerator. This accelerator is now uh, built, established, and working at Nazarbayev University. And we, we use it. We use it for the multiple uh, projects, and we use it uh, uh, most actively, we currently work in material science. So we work with the uh, nanomaterials. Nanomaterials, we fabricate them, 
using the clean room, uh, uh, similar as you see on background of my, uh, when I started the talk, you see background behind me, it was clean room environment in the Berkeley lab. So we currently uh, are building these clean rooms in uh, infrastructure at Nazarbayev University. And uh, in several months, it will be opened. So far, before we work in, in Berkeley, uh, partially, to, uh, now it looks like that we can do similar things here at Nazarbayev University. So we do the advanced materials, nanofabrication, characterization, and we build devices. For example, we build the transistors, we build the uh, sensors, uh, we build, uh, uh, we fabricate uh, the, uh, uh, we help fabricate devices, uh, um, solar-based uh, advanced panels, or, or the uh, or the, uh, the uh, transparent conductive coatings. So, so the, uh, when you have your cell, so cell phone, the, uh, the top surface of your cell phone is uh, conductive and transparent. So that's, we developed uh, the, this type of material uh, for the future. And uh, we use accelerator to help us doing this because accelerator is, uh, actually can be used for material science. Our, uh, we have specialty for our accelerator to do the material science. Ashad Jumabekov, uh, he uh, three a uh, couple of years ago he had his first nature paper on the he was successful in building the uh, uh, solar cell energy uh, uh, based on perovskites and he uh, one of his projects and he's doing other projects on this uh, he uh, to uh, to build his renewable energy so perovskite solar cell applications. He uh, is doing the micro nanofabrication and he creates the devices uh, that uh, helps him to uh, do his uh, uh, to, uh, is, is, uh, to uh, uh, fulfill his dreams uh, here at Nazarbayev University. The facility already are present. Um, uh, right now, see, at Nazarbayev University, we are building the facilities. Uh, they, uh, it, most of it is already in place, but still the uh, other exciting uh, Things are happening. So we, as we speak, there are uh, people working to to um, establish and install new facilities in clean rooms, fabrication, nanofabrication, characterization. All of this is established right now. I would say that uh, first years of Nazarbayev universities, the uh, considerable percentage of research was done outside. We had to go to Berkeley to do the advanced stuff. Now we almost everything, ninety percent of stuff, we are able to do it here. So uh, we still collaborate and we'll continue forever to collaborate with others, but we, most of stuff we'll, we'll already do here. Ekaterina Mandelara, very interesting stuff. You heard about quantum computers, quantum information. Uh, she is a theoretician who does exactly this. So the smart use of quantum mechanical uh, in the uh, laws and knowledge that is applicable to the contemporary technology of the quantum computer, quantum control. So very interesting theory. Sergey Bubin, uh, well, uh, quantum dynamics. So the, uh, what happens if you, uh, can you affect single electron to go through the complex structure and how uh, you can control this and how you can uh, uh, model this. So he is doing this theoretical modeling of this quantum dynamical system. Daniel Mafarina, one of the guys who is doing the, uh, the space and cost uh, astrophysics stuff. I was uh, describing it a uh, little bit more details when I'm talking about the ECL, Advanced uh, Energetic Cosmic Laboratory by George Smoot. So, uh, Daniel is one of the successful guys with us who is working on the, uh, this space stuff. Gravitational collapse, black holes, naked singularities, quantum gravity. It sounds interesting, and it is. <laughs> it is interesting. Ernazar Abdikamal. Another guy who is doing the um, uh, cosmic stuff. So he's doing gravitational waves, shock waves, hydrodynamic turbulence, supernova. Michael Good. And uh, similar. So he's doing the stuff that is related to the cosmology, quantum cosmology, general relativity. He's doing uh, the, um, the stuff that affects us on the global level. So if uh, if you, if you really need, want to know what will happen in uh, 10 billion years from now, and, uh, or what happened 10 billion years ago that affects us now, uh, or what is in general how our universe is built from the first principle, so these guys are the, who are studying this. Okay, 
So here's our, our full uh, topics on the Bachelor of Physics. Um, then uh, we have our Masters. So please have a quick look what we have on Masters. So that's basically uh, we expect you guys to know if you go to our to physics, that's the classical mechanics, classical hydrodynamics, quantum mechanics, statistical physics. That's the basic stuff you need to be good at. Every physicist or every, uh, I would say, uh, contemporary engineer or the should, uh, should, be, uh, should know this basic stuff. And for the uh, PhD, now let me give you the more details on PhD. So if you come to us for PhD, it will last generally for four years. We'll pay you good stipend. So this is the money are available. If you have more questions on that, ask us. So uh, some administration people are also here. They will answer this. But we do typically pay uh, the uh, good salary for the PhD students. Uh, in particular, I have my uh, funding uh, and I have my PhD students and I able to do most of time, I pay my PhD students good salary, $1,000 per, per month as a research assistant. And then there are teaching assistantship. So you help us, uh, you help with teaching. Every PhD student should in parallel be a good teacher. So uh, we expect that you at least spend two semesters uh, helping us in teaching because you need to develop your own teaching capability. You, after you graduate, graduate, graduation, you should be versatile. You can do teaching, you can do research, you can do technology, you can do, go anywhere and you have enough brain power and experience to succeed in every field. Uh, first year, mostly it's coursework. Then at the end of the first year, we'll uh, do the comprehensive exam. We'll check how your basic knowledge of uh, the uh, physics uh, is so do you, do you have it and uh, it basically will be uh, on uh, comprehensive exam will be covering the coursework of your first year uh, then main part will start research and then you do research we expect you that you do research you know, over the first year you should but by the first year already during the first year find your advisor group with which you work you started to work already there and then next years you do research and you have fun. Research is fun. Research in physics is extra fun. Uh, you should uh, uh, do research, enjoy yourself, and make your brain work, and be successful. Publish several papers, as a, at least a couple of papers as a first author. And then uh, uh, after that, uh, you will be graduating at your fifth year. So as I said, uh, well, the PhD proposal, by the end of the third semester, you should have already a good idea what is your topic of your PhD thesis, which is based on your research and papers. Uh, that you then you should be two GTAs, graduate teaching assistant, as I said, two semester for teaching, and then uh, typically we expect that you will uh, be able to grade in four years. Sometimes it's uh, not happening, and we see it, and that's fine. So there is a, a possibility to extend it into the fifth year. Um, and then uh, what else? Uh, uh, you'll have main supervisor, you'll have good supervisor, you'll have a committee who will be monitoring your uh, the uh, performance. And that's all in your interest because we want you to be good and uh, you want to have good time and uh, you want to be a good professional. So uh, supervisors, co-supervised committees are to help you with this. Uh, funding, two ways, teaching and research engineering. You may help us with teaching, you get funding for that, you good, good stipend, or uh, if you're doing research with your advisor and the advisor is happy with you, uh, well, he'll give you research assistantship, he pays your salary. And internship, as I said, for example, uh, we, every uh, professor collaborate with others to do uh, internships. Uh, uh, my uh, uh, first PG student, uh, he spent uh, literally uh, many, many, many months in Berkeley in internship. Uh, and um, Berkeley is available, uh, Stanford is available, and other, uh, for, in my group, uh, then in other groups, other universities, uh, other places are also available for internships. So based through the collaboration uh, scheme. Okay, uh, so uh, that's um, my basic stuff I wanted to describe you guys. We have just um, about 10 minutes left. Let me see what kind of, uh, let me, uh, See what you have 
in questions. Uh, Professor Alexander, here yes. uh, from Jansaya Borjanova, here is a question. Is it I don't accepted? See myself. Uh, is it possible I can see my questions also? Or? Uh, can you push the chat button uh, below? Oh, okay. And yeah, you can I see. Read. Right. Good, 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 good. I see. Yes. Mm -hmm. nice, and, nice, uh, nice. I see. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, is it accept, uh, is accepted if after graduation master's program molecular medicine or chemical engineering applied to physics PhD? Uh, it is possible, but um, uh, uh, I would say that still talk to physics professors about it. Because, uh, uh, well, it, uh, if you join a physics PhD program, then what kind of background you need depends on the project that you join, on the group that you join. So uh, if your background may suitable for specific field and project, then no problem, you can join it. But to find out it, I would recommend you talk to, to, the, uh, prof to professors. And talk to professor and say, oh, he, uh, he probably will talk to you about the, what kind of background you have, and then uh, and what is your inspirations, and then see if you are uh, well uh, good for this. Then uh, after that, uh, maybe I would say also, um, uh, is it possible to start working with us, with professors, even before joining PhD program? It is possible. You can do it as a research assistant. So if you have time, uh, or if you really want to try it. Well, you can join us at, and this uh, realm to be research assistants. Uh, actually, many of our, uh, uh, many of uh, young uh, people do exactly this. So they work with us as research assistants, then they transfer to a PhD program. This is a good way to do it. Or you can go completely from outside, uh, but first, still, you want to uh, go to us, talk to our professors about your background, how you fit to the program, and talk what you want to do. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, I'm sorry. I've just uh, I been entering this conference a little bit late, so I wanted to have. I wanted to ask a question. Is it possible to have PhD after bach bachelor's somehow? Unfortunately, no. So you first need to have master's. If after the P bachelor, uh, can you go at the PhD level? Yes, but first go to master's, then from master's you can transfer to PhD. Well, you, you'll be, uh, you need to apply, but uh, they, uh, we have the uh, guys like this. So we have a uh, recent PhD student who was before master student uh, with us. And then he, uh, uh, he liked uh, his master's uh, program experience. And then he transferred, he applied to PhD and he was accepted. So it is possible. So you want to do it. Actually, this is a good way to do it. So uh, go to master's, you will do research. See if you like it, if you're happy with this. Then, if you're happy, if everything goes fine, then apply and try and continue with PhD studies. Other questions, guys? So feel Thank free you. to talk freely. Yes, I do have a question. Um, what are the core courses that the first year PhD students are supposed to take? Uh, the uh, first core courses. Uh, let me open. My slides. Okay. Um, let me share my presentation again. Do you see my screen? So this is a sample yes. of PhD physics courses. Uh, they, there are some general courses like research methods and ethics. Uh, the then the main course that you need classical mechanics. We want you to take the quantum mechanics. And then uh, there are uh, the uh, several uh, electives. Typically as electives, 
we want also to have something very general. We want you to have, for example, classical electrodynamics, or depending on your specialization, then you may have some other courses. For example, you go to the material science, then, uh, well, you better have condensed matter physics. You work with lasers, you will have lasers and photonics. So, as you see, classical mechanics, quantum mechanics are the, uh, um, for sure, this is like the standard courses everyone takes. And then there are choice of uh, the, uh, the optional courses, the, the courses for choice. Okay, other questions? Okay, what are the deadlines to, to submit applications and when do you actually start accepting applications for the program? Uh, I would, I don't know the data for the next year. Professor, uh, please, uh, 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 Miriam, can you answer or anybody else yeah, can answer? Uh, dear Vasily, thank you for your question. Uh, it's not open yet, but approximately it will open in uh, in the middle of November and it will last until April. So we will do an announcement on social media, on Instagram, Facebook, or our uh, SSH website. I'll put it down uh, in the chat box so you can check them and uh, you will see the uh, news about the admissions. Yeah, here Maya wrote that uh, about the dates, so it will open yeah. soon. Yeah, this regarding the first round, this regarding the early admissions. Regarding the second round, regular admissions, we don't know the dates and this, it's still under the discussion. And once it will be approved, of course, we'll put all this information on the website. Just keep tracking. Thank you, Maya. Any other questions? Can I also ask, is it possible, for example, um, if you had a bachelor and master's in some, I don't know, let's say in biology or in math, and then you want to have PhD in any other subject, is it okay? Is it possible to do like that? Uh, it may be possible in general, but talk to the specific uh, professors. Uh, because, see, for example, uh, let me give you an example. Uh, 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 we have several collaborative projects with biology guys. So then uh, can we uh, uh, apply, uh, employ the guy, uh, the person with the good biology background in this project? Uh, the answer is yes. Still, we are, the, uh, we are physics oriented. So the, the uh, methods, uh, you will need to do the methods which are kind of physics methods. Uh, to do this biological project. But the same thing if you, for example, go into the bi biology uh, PhD, say, for example, you have the background in physics, can you do uh, biology? Well, you, it is possible, uh, uh, and it's based on the uh, biology guys, they often use the physics devices, they use microscopes, they use the um, advanced uh, 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 characterization uh, uh, the uh, equipment that require the standard physics knowledge. So that it depends on the, the general answer, it depends on the topic of PhD. So if you are doing mostly biology in your PhD, then I would say better if you do the PhD in biology, but have in parallel a uh, co-advisor from physics. And then uh, you can kind of have the collaborative projects that if you have both biology and physics combined. If you uh, do biology and physics project, but you focus more on physical methods, then you better do it inside the PhD program. So um, uh, talk, I uh, advise you to uh, be active and talk to the professors, to our professors and find out um, about specific, specific things. Say for example, oh, I have background in biology, but I want to do this, is it possible? And, Discuss it with the professors. Uh, here is one more question from Jinsaya. Uh, she's asking about the project. Can you please take a look? Just a second. Uh, Jinsaya, can you please clarify what project do you mean? Uh, 
uh, I mean that uh, that's related to biology in collaboration with biology, as you mentioned before. Uh, okay, uh, well, uh, let me take example of biology. So currently, um, we have a collaborative project with the biology professor to do the, uh, the COVID diagnostics. And this COVID diagnostics is to develop the uh, chip, microfluidics chip, that uh, will use acoustic uh, waves to separate the particles that are uh, from the blood and uh, that are indicators of the process happening due to the COVID infection, the COVID virus. And this project, uh, it has biological part and physics part. In physics part, we need to do this device and we need to analyze what is happening with these particles in the blood. Uh, and then the uh, students may be attached to this project. And, we can, uh, and then uh, it's uh, uh, the student who will be doing this project, he had kind of the, uh, be interdisciplinary. He'll, he'll need both biology and physics to do it. And then uh, what uh, PhD program he should go in, physics or biology, it depends. It depends what is the kind of the, if you more in stuff he, will, he want to do is biology, then he should go to, uh, to, to the biology. If he want to do kind of the more physical stuff, or right, so this device stuff, so uh, the, uh, the characterization and understanding of these particles on the uh, fundamental level uh, the, in COVID, then you should probably go to physics. Oh, uh, uh, COVID-19, uh, uh, start talking to me because uh, I am copying this project. And, uh, uh, nuclear physics. Yes, guys, we do nuclear physics. So uh, we... Um, uh, the uh, uh, my one of my postdocs he does specifically nuclear physics on the DC six accelerator here in Astana, uh, it uh, and we do nuclear physics. So we study the uh, low energy uh, resonance uh, nuclear reactions uh, suitable for it, 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 uh, that has interest in astrophysics, and we do some other nuclear stuff. So there is, if you know, there is this. Uh, DC six accelerator in Astana, uh, in affiliate of the Nuclear uh, Science Institute uh, of uh, Kazakhstan. Yes, we collaborate with them heavily. Well, actually, one of my uh, uh, previous uh, PhD students, he worked uh, both with me and with these guys, and uh, we have this uh, collaborative project. And this guy was doing PhD with us, but part of his research he was doing on DC six accelerator. It's possible. Uh, professor. Other questions? We have more questions from Vasily Sokolov. Uh, he's asking oh, how competitive. competitive it is yes. competitive, guys. So we, uh, as we see from the um, uh, previous uh, round of, uh, uh, we have a healthy uh, number of candidates. But uh, realistic, I would say, it's uh, uh, reasonable. So uh, now we, from the uh, pool of candidates, we take, I would say, more than fifty percent. But we had good candidates. We have good candidates. So the main idea, see, uh, you, uh, you, you, it's in your interest. You should have suitable background. If you are too weak, uh, uh, you'll struggle. So uh, uh, we, um, they, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll try to get you more uh, the uh, background during the first year. But still, uh, uh, we want uh, we want you to be good. And uh, they, uh, if you, uh, uh, and but we'll be helping you. So generally, I would say that we have uh, our uh, PhD students. I would say uh, typically are stronger than PG students at other Kazakhstan universities. Uh, and, but uh, it is competitive. So if you think, are you competitive? Try it. But first, try to talk to the professors, to us, uh, and uh, um, see what we think about your specific background. So try it. So PhD program is special. So you guys, when you enter PhD program, it's always good if you have preliminary talk to the uh, professors or other graduate students and see what's actually going inside the uh, the department and physics and and department and the program. Uh, here is more questions. Uh, here is more question from Jensaya. Oh, uh, actually, there is a very good uh, the comment from Chad Yablonsky, who is director. Mm -hmm. uh, he is director of uh, the all PhD programs at Nazarbayev, at Nazarbayev universities, and uh, you may hear in the in the chat. Uh, in the, uh, so he he is reminding that uh, we offer uh, um, financial support for all four full years. 
So if you are uh, if you are worried, can you survive being a PhD student at Harvard University? Answer is yes. You will survive. You survive in the good level. Our stipend is general stipend is higher than average salary in Kazakhstan. So we get at least 600 or 800 something like this uh, dollars per month for your uh, um, uh, for, um, for your stipend and for all four years. Other questions? Uh, Jansaya is asking uh, if, if it's possible to join the COVID-19 project as a volunteer. If yes, what uh, you talk to me. So uh, find my email address or, or phone number. Um, let me type my email address uh, and talk to me about the details on this. Here's the, my email. And in general, uh, talk to professors. So on the website, find the email, send them email that you are uh, uh, that you are the person, the, your your name, uh, that what you a uh, couple of sentences about yourself, and ask questions, initiate the dialogue. And here I typed the uh, general email of the school, so you can write there as well if you have general questions regarding admission requirements. Uh, professor, I think we're uh, kind of out of time. Thank you okay, for your guys. presentation, <laughs> Professor Alexander. Uh, I think it was very interesting and useful for everyone who wants to apply for a PhD in physics. So we uh, urge you to apply this uh, to this program and uh, we wish you good luck. And also, uh, if you are interested in master's programs, uh, we are going to have uh, webinars this week uh, in on Thursday and on Friday at 5 p.m. Please join them. Uh, there will be uh, more webinars in Masters in Physics and Mathematics. So if you are interested in joining Masters programs, you are welcome to visit these webinars as well. Um, thank you again for joining this webinar. Thank you, Professor. Uh, please uh, don't hesitate to write us, write professors, if you have uh, any questions regarding programs and requirements. Thank you all. May I say a last sentence? Sure. So guys, uh, after the uh, graduating of this PhD in physics, uh, we uh, believe that you'll be a good professional on the level that you can be able to find fun, interesting, good paying job anywhere in the world. And we hope that you'll find the position, uh, you'll be plenty of opportunities in Kazakhstan as well, but you uh, with this experience, you'll be uh, good and uh, safe uh, to work uh, everywhere including Kazakhstan and Western countries. Thank you, guys. Thank you all. We will send the uh, recording uh, later. So please uh, oh, uh, keep it, tuned. It's recorded? Oh, I should be more careful. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's recorded. And people ask to send the recording. I was too informal. I should be more formal if I realize it's <laughs> recorded. Okay. Thank you, guys. Yeah, hope it was it will be very helpful. Okay, bye. Bye.